name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Counter. Amen. And that's where we can make mistakes as individuals and as a church to want to like throw religion down somebody's throat. No. We want to pray that everyone, the entire world, has an encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen? We want to begin to love Jesus with Mary's love. And this is what we learn from the saints. It really elevated my prayer life and my faith a couple years ago. When I began praying every day, even in the middle of Mass, I quietly pray, Jesus, let me believe in you with Mary's faith. Let me hope in you with Mary's hope. Let me love you with Mary's love. Amen? It will change your life. If you exchange your faith, your hope, and your love for Our Ladies, no one has had greater faith than Mary. Blessed is she who trusted that the Lord's words to her will be fulfilled. And so the reason why Mary is so often appearing and she's painted in blue is because she is the blueprint for the Catholic Church. She's the blueprint of the human race. Amen. So, brothers, says, I remember something that happened at a charismatic conference I was attending in Florida many years ago, where I was born and raised. I was born and raised in Tampa. And I was attending a conference there. And I want to tell you something extraordinary that happened when I was there. The theme of the conference was Jesus Christ must be proclaimed as Lord. It was quite beautiful. And I was just a young fellow. I don't know, maybe 19 or 20. And I really liked, I loved the conference and I liked the theme. But I was being more and more um, disturbed in my spirit. And I think anointed by the Holy Spirit as I listened to the speakers. What came across to me is what St. Louis de Montfort has taught us. And what John Paul ratified, that Jesus, beloved, cannot reign as Lord of the human race until the Virgin Mary is accepted as mother and queen. And that is the key. And that's why Our Lady said that at Our Lady of All Nations in Amsterdam, precisely that. That when the doctrines, the dogmas of Mediatrix of All Grace and Co-Redemptrix and Advocate when those are proclaimed by the Holy Father infallibly, such a blessing will come upon the human race that the world will be converted. The Lord cannot reign as king until Mary reigns as queen. Did you realize that? It's one of the secrets of the Catholic faith. In fact, St. Louis de Montfort wrote a book. Not the famous one you know about, True Devotion, but you know he wrote a smaller book and it's called The Secret of Mary. The secret of Mary. It's a smaller one. And he describes these really facts of our faith. So Mary has an amazing role to play in the church and in your heart. She prepares us for the bridegroom. When I was an altar boy many years ago at St. Patrick's Church in Tampa, I lived right across the street from the rectory. Our family did. And it's really not fair because I couldn't get away with anything because the priest saw everything that we did right across the street from the rectory. And he called upon my brother and I to serve every mass, especially the, the wedding masses and the funeral masses. There's nobody else available. So he would always call my mom and say, Maria, can, can Jim and, and Bill come over and serve a mass? So we served like every funeral and every wedding mass at that church like for years. We were like little experts, my little brother and I. And 
I remember we'd have the priest sacristy on this side and the altar servers over on that side. And when there was a wedding mass, almost always on a Saturday, the bride and her entourage, they would dress over in the altar boy's sacristy. That was reserved for the bride to get ready. You know, they're so beautiful, aren't they? That white dress and their hair coiffed just right. I mean, anyone can look beautiful in that white dress. You know what I mean? Well, the mother would always be there. The mother of the bride should be there. And I was setting up the altar. And invariably, because there were little vents in the sacristy wall, there were vents for some reason, I guess for some sort of airflow, it would also allow voices to travel. And so as people were coming in for the wedding, mom was back there with her daughter and, you know, getting her hair ready. And sometimes you would hear, ouch, mom, stop it, ouch. And mom be fixing the hair. And then sometimes you'd hear a, a couple words you don't want to hear in a church. Ouch, mama, blink, 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 ouch, mama. And I'm out there, I'm a little altar boy, like 12 years old and 13. And I would, I come from a big family, so it didn't scandalize me that much. You know what I mean? I've heard everything in my family. But I ran back there and I would say, shh. And I would point to the vents. And they would be, you know, so embarrassed. And they would get real quiet. And mom would continue getting her daughter ready. And when the wedding mass would start and the wedding march would begin, you would see that beautiful bride. That's you. And the mother is Mary. And she's getting you ready for the wedding march. And sometimes it hurts. But she's getting you ready. Amen? And I realized that later as a priest, what God was teaching me, that Mary is the mother of the bride. And she prepares the bride and gets the bride ready for the bridegroom. So Mary has that role in your heart, and you want to invite her in tonight because we're living in times that are nothing less than apocalyptic, the times we're living in now. And we need to be ready. And the fathers of old, more than a thousand years ago, said that in the final days, it is true devotion to Mary that would be the mark of orthodoxy. True devotion to Mary entering the heart of our mother would be the mark of an authentic Catholic. Amen? And that's because no one has ever loved Jesus more than Mary. No one has ever understood him better than Mary. No one has ever trusted him as much as Mary. And so I was at this conference at St. Leo's Abbey in Central Florida, Central Florida, and they were, had this beautiful theme of Jesus Christ being proclaimed as Lord. And I knew in my heart that Jesus can never be proclaimed as Lord, whether you're charismatic or not charismatic, unless you proclaim the queen of charismatics, Mary, as our queen. Amen? It's in every Protestant Bible, isn't it? Who was there at Pentecost? Who was in the center of the apostles? Mary. No Mary, no Pentecost. I'm sorry. Amen? No Mary, no Pentecost. She has more charismatic gifts than anybody in world history. Has anybody healed more people than Mary? My goodness. And I wish I could hear Mary pray in tongues. I bet she has a beautiful prayer tongue, don't you? She is the mother of the charismatic movement. And so as I'm listening to this and I'm agonizing inside because this is the doctrine of the saints, and it's really the doctrine of the church. We need Mary. She's not a nicety. She's a necessity. Amen? She's not a nicety. She's a necessity. And so I was agonizing because I knew what the Lord was saying to me. And I tried to tell the prophetic team they had set up, a team of men and women who had the gift of prophecy, and they would test prophecies for that conference. But I was a very young guy. I was like 19 or 20 with long hair. And I think my hair was in a ponytail that day. So I was anathema. 
It's like I was like bad or evil or something because I had long hair. So I couldn't fit in. I didn't fit the roster of what a prophet is supposed to look like. I guess they never met John the Baptist. You know what I mean? <laughs> they haven't read maybe the whole Bible, just part of it, you see? And so they really didn't want to take me seriously. And I shared with them what I was receiving, that the theme of the conference was beautiful, but Jesus cannot be proclaimed as Lord until Mary is proclaimed as queen. The bride prepares the way for the bridegroom. Amen? Well, that may be something new for you, but it's really the teaching of John Paul and St. Louis de Montfort, St. Alphonsus de Worry, Mother Teresa. It's really the teaching of the church. And so they wouldn't listen to me, and I wrote it down. They said, well, you can write it down. And when I gave it to them, I could see they didn't want it because I was young with long hair, so I must be bad, you see? So I went back to my seat. More talks proceeded. As I'm sitting there watching the stage, the light in the ceiling, like just one of those back there, the high light up in the ceiling pouring down on the stage, began to flicker off and on, and it turned blue. Lights just like these. So imagine one of those lights suddenly sheds blue light here on the ambo. Blue, not white, blue. And began to go off and on. For 45 minutes, a blue light. I don't know if anybody else was seeing it. So when that talk was over and I took a break, I went up to examine the light and there's no blue filter up there. It's just like all the other lights. And so I realized, whoa, the Holy Spirit is confirming something. Amen? That Mary's blue light, it was a confirmation that she has to be proclaimed as well. We were going to, through a time in the church we were ashamed of Our Lady. We need to love Our, Our Lady with Jesus' own love. Amen? So I'm going to tell you what happened in just a minute. But what I'd like to do is pray, therefore, a decade of the rosary with you. And I'll tell you one reason why. Because praying is more important than preaching. Prayer is more important than teaching. And sacrifice is more important than prayer. Amen? So becoming real Catholics in real Christians, you see? So we want to pray now for the wisdom of God to flood you and I. Can we do that? I want to pray a decade with you. And if you have your rosary, you might want to pull it out right now. Padre Pio said, this is the weapon. Padre Pio. Padre Pio. This is the robe he used to wear, been entrusted to me. This is the robe of Padre Pio, who said that this is the weapon. The rosary said is the weapon. He was the most powerful, charismatic saint in history. Amen? Would you like to touch Padre Pio's robe? Then I think maybe when we're done, I'll place the robe on a special table. If you'd like to come up and touch the robe, we'll ask Padre Pio to give you what you need the most to be ready for the times that are coming. Amen? And if you don't mind, I want to pray that everyone here becomes a saint. Is that okay? Let's pray that everyone in this church becomes a saint. You were chosen to be here tonight. Amen? So get ready. We're going to pray a decade now, the fifth joyful mystery, the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple, because the fruit of this mystery is wisdom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let me just do the opening prayers anyway. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. For His Holiness the Pope, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we ask you to grant to everyone here an increase of faith and hope and charity and our family members as well. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Ave, ave, ave Maria. Ave. Beloved, the first mystery of joy is the Annunciation, the second, the Visitation, the third, the Nativity, the fourth mystery, the Presentation, where we pray for purity. And what is the fifth mystery of joy? The finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. So let's offer this in a special way for all the teenagers throughout Seattle. Can we do that? All the teenagers here in the church and the children, all the kids throughout all the state of Washington. They are under attack like never before. Amen? Amen? And we have to pray for them, and the most powerful weapon is the rosary. We're going to ask Blessed Carlo Acutis to pray with us, the new 16-year-old saint whose body is incorrupt. The first saint in world history buried in blue jeans. He's in blue jeans. His body is incorrupt in Italy. And he's standing right next to me. I don't know if you can see him. He's standing right next to me. And I'm getting the Holy Spirit all over me right now. We ask Blessed Carlo to pray with us this mystery of the boy Jesus for all the teenagers and children of Washington and those who are here and in your family. Amen? Amen. The future is in their hands. It's time for them to become saints. The fifth mystery of joy, the finding of the boy Jesus in the temple. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And now we visualize the boy Jesus coming to the temple and teaching the elders. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, mother of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, all beautiful, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Jesus. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. Ave, ave, ave Maria. good, wasn't it? That's medicine for your soul. The rosary is the best preparation for the Eucharist, by the way. It's the way to receive the Lord well. And maybe we'll pray another decade in a few minutes, okay? Only if you're good. <laughs> or if you want to become good. And just a little aside so you know this, you know, Carlo Acutis died when he was 16, 2006, in Italy. His tomb is now in Assisi where St. Francis is. 
because that was his favorite saint, was St. Francis. And so the church gave permission to move his holy body to Assisi. And the Franciscan friars there in Assisi just released a report last year that for the first time in history, more pilgrims are going to Assisi and visiting Blessed Carlo than visiting St. Francis. For the first time in ever. His body, has a, there's a little glass strip on the tomb. You can see his incorrupt body. And this young man was a computer wizard, by the way. Back in the early 2000s, he was in on the very beginning of the computers. He actually said to his parents one day, he said, Mom and Dad, I, I tried those new video games. He says, you know what? And they said, what, son? They're addictive, he said. They're addictive. He says, I, I like them and they're fun, but I can see they become addictive. So I'm going to limit myself to one hour a week. Imagine the teenage boy telling his parents that. <laughs> if only every Catholic parent would tell their teenagers that. Amen? Amen? And this young man, beloved, was a saint of the Eucharist. It, he's the one who converted his mom and dad to the Catholic faith and all of his family as well. Well, you know, he's now blessed, blessed Carlo. There have been quite a few miracles through the invocation of his name and prayer. St. Francis has been appearing to his mother, Mrs. Zacutis, at night. And you might still be able to find those videos on the YouTube. His mother is alive and well, you know. And she's been testifying. She's very close with her bishop there. She was with the bishop when they examined the body officially. By the way, that's on the YouTube too. It is quite amazing and touching to see the bishop with the mother of the saint there. And the incorrupt body is incredible. In Spanish, increíble, to see that. Amazing and beautiful. Frances has been appearing to Mrs. Acutis in her dreams at night. And not just a fanciful dream, a three-dimensional prophetic dream. You see, like St. Don Bosco used to have, a prophetic dream. And St. Francis told Mrs. Acutis a year and a half ago, your son, Carlo, occupies a very high place in heaven. Your son, Carlo, occupies a very high place in heaven. You know what that means to me? St. Thomas Aquinas, St. Augustine, St. Teresa of Avila, Carlo Acutis, John Paul the Great. He's up there with the greatest of them all. And it shows you that you don't need to be old with silver hair to be a saint. You can even be bald-headed and be a saint. But teenagers could become saints as well. Amen? And he told Mrs. Acutis, he said, when your son Carlo is canonized, not if, but when. And he said that to Mrs. Acutis a year and a half ago when Carlo was only venerable. He wasn't even blessed yet. He was just venerable, Carlo. When your son is canonized, then he said, God Almighty will fulfill all prophecy and send forth the Holy Spirit over the face of the earth and touch every teenager in the world with sanctifying grace. Amen. Every teenager in the world with sanctity. Amen. Amen. I'm not mad at you. I'm just happy. <laughs> Amen. Beloved, is that good news? We are living in prophetic times. Amen. And the more you pray your rosary, the quicker the prophecies will be fulfilled. Mary will crush the devil with her heel, but I have news for you. You are her heel. I've been called a heel a few times myself, by the way. <laughs> Mary will crush the devil with her heel. You are her heel. And we priests, we're the big toe. We priests. <laughs> we will crush the devil's head through the rosary in particular. Amen? Amen? And by the way, I don't know about you, but since I was a teenager, when I pray the rosary, it, it, inevitable, I start praying in tongues by the second decade. I don't know about you. Because guess what? 
Mary is the bride of the Holy Spirit. Where the Spirit is, there is Our Lady. Where Our Lady is, there is the Spirit. I cannot pray the rosary without breaking out into the gift of holy tongues. Amen? Isn't it amazing, the economy of God? Well, brothers and sisters, we are in the time of the fulfillment of prophecies. Let me tell you what happened back at St. Leo Abbey in Florida many years ago when I was a very young fellow, and they would not accept my prophecy. I guess I was too young and my hair was too long. And I wrote it down for them. They still, didn't, they still ignored it. The blue light began flashing. Not only that one talk, for the next two or three talks after that into the night. And so I went back to the prophecy team, but they treated me like I was like, you know, like a little boy, like a little nothing. Never do that, beloved, to our young people. The rule of St. Benedict, one of the greatest works of Christian literature in 2,000 years, the rule of St. Benedict, instructs the abbot of every monastery, respect and listen to the young. Listen to the youngest monk, it says. Always listen to the youngest one. Is that interesting? That's part of respect life. Amen? Listen to the voice of that little baby in the womb as well. Amen? Amen. Don't judge people by their size. Amen? Amen? Well, they wouldn't listen to me. It was now Sunday morning, the end of this three-day charismatic conference, and I was feeling rather frustrated. If you've ever had the gift of prophecy and you have a word from the Lord and he's speaking it within you and you're not allowed to proclaim it and they won't let you, you're being frustrated, this is not a nice feeling. When God gives you a word, he says, my word, he said, will not return to me void, he said. It will not return void. I became so upset, what am I going to do? I'm a little nothing. I'm 19 with long hair and a ponytail. And they won't listen to the word that I'm receiving for the Lord. And so Sunday morning, after our breakfast, everyone went across the field there at the abbey to the giant conference hall. And there was a, a big group, I really don't remember, I would say 2,000 people, went to the conference hall, and I'm lagging behind, and my friend said, Jim, come, come. I said, no, you guys go. You guys go ahead, I'll be, I'll be with you in a little while. And I, I just stood still, and I saw everyone, all 2,000, go into the conference hall, and I'm outside, at a distance, in the middle of a field, just waiting. And I said, to my best friend. And when he's your best friend, things are different. And I said to him, whom you encounter here, I said, Lord, they won't listen to the word you gave me. They think that I'm nothing, I guess, or stupid. You gave me a word and they won't listen to me. And I know it's your word. What am I going to do, Lord? It's burning within me. They're not teaching the fullness of truth. Lord, I need your help. You've got to help me. This word is important. Maybe I'm not important, but the word is. Amen? Amen. But of course, to God, we're all important. Amen? In fact, you are a word from God. Your life is a word. And so I said, Lord, I don't know what I'm going to do. You've got to help me. In fact, Lord, I'm not moving from this ground till you do something. <laughs> and I got real serious. I'm not moving till you do something. You gave me a burden. You have to help me lift it. You gave it to me. They're not listening, and I'm not moving till you do something. You're the boss. You gave it to me. They're not listening. I'm waiting right now. And I waited there in all 19 years of me, and I didn't move in the middle of a field. It was like a soccer field outside the conference hall. I just waited. <laughs> Mm, I'm waiting. I'm not moving till you do something. And I suddenly heard behind me my name. 
and I'm the only one outside. And I hear, Jim, hey Jim, is that you? And I turn around. And coming out of a little box in the ground, it's like a soccer field, there was like a little concrete box. Coming out of the box was a priest <laughs> in the middle of nowhere on a field. It was like a little utility room, I guess, underneath the, the surface of the ground. And there were water pipes down there in a little office. I didn't even know it was there on the side of the playing field. And a priest emerges. And I see his caller. He says, Jim, is that you? Yes, Father Fred. <laughs> is that you? And he's, I'm not kidding you, he comes out of the ground, up to his waist, and says, Jim, I need your help. Yeah, sure, Father. He says, I'm interviewing one of the speakers for the conference. And the main speaker was someone you may have heard of. Her name was Babsy Bleasdale. She was the great woman, Catholic, charismatic preacher from Trinidad, who was invited by the Pope to give a conference to the bishops in the Rome and the Vatican. A black Catholic woman, charismatic, filled with God, a prophet among prophets, Babsy. You gotta look her up if you don't know her. Babsy was the main speaker. He says, I'm interviewing Babsy. Would you come down and hold the microphone for me? And I thought, that's it. I will ask Babsy. She's known world over and approved by the Pope as a prophet. Can you imagine that happening to a 19-year-old? So I go down the steps with Father into the cave, and I hold the microphone, and Father interviews Babsy for a radio show that he does every week. When he got all done, I said, Miss Babsy, yes. Can I ask you a question? Yes, you beautiful young man. You can ask me a question. She was so sweet. I said, Babsy, the Lord gave me a word for the conference, and they won't listen to me. I'm, hurt. I'm getting very emotional now. I remember the moment precisely. She says, yes, son. What did the Lord tell you? I said, Babsy, the Lord told me you cannot enthrone Jesus Christ as Lord until his mother is enthroned as queen. She looked at me with those pearly, shining eyes. And she took her hand, she put her hand up like this, she said, That's it! That's it! That's the word we've been waiting for! That's it, she said! I will proclaim it to everyone right now. Amen! <laughs> Amen! Now remember, a few minutes before, I'm not going anywhere till you do something, period. Jim! Yes? <laughs> Amen. It's so hard not to say hallelujah, you know what I mean? It's so hard. If I do, you won't tell the bishop, will you? Go for it. Hallelujah. Let's do it real soft. Hallelujah. No, no one will hear us that way. Hallelujah. Very good. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord was confirming for me, confirmed that word about the Virgin Mary, that when Mary lives within you, her son is amplified within you. She is the plan for the human race. God, beloved, is a lover. He's in search of a bride. So much so, so much so, that he became flesh to woo his bride, to live with him forever. Amen? We are in a giant romance, a giant love story. This is really at the heart of the Catholic faith. God loves the human race. The father is seeking for a bride for his son. And he looks everywhere at all the imaginable possible worlds God, in his wisdom and his creativity, could have made a billion other universes. He looked at all those and no, 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 no. Y yes, Earth, that's the one I want, Earth. I will make human beings there, and I will make a church, and that church will be the bride of my son forever. 
And so he made the Milky Way, he made the galaxy, he made the planet Earth, and he made the church in order to form a bride for his son. And he loves you and I more than we love him. He loves us more than we love him. Amen? And brothers and sisters, only one human being in the history of the world has begun to return to God the love that he gave to her. Only one. And with Mary's help, we can do it too. Amen? So I want to teach you what Our Lady taught me just last year. I'm in love with God, my brothers and sisters. This is my confession. I'm in love with God. I truly love him. Do you? I'm truly in love with God. He's my everything. And I want him to be more so. And so through the Virgin Mary, I be beginning to love him with Mary's perfect love inside of me. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Those are Mary's words. Amen? Would you say them after me? Would you say this after me? My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. For he has looked with favor on Washington. Amen. Amen. Mary loved God with an infinite type of love. You don't know the greatness of Our Lady. You may, I could recommend to you one or two books that might help you. One's called The Mystical City of God by Venerable Mary of Agreda. Has like 25 imprimators and read by like 30 popes. The Mystical City of God. It'll tell you the greatness of your mother. But I want to tell you what Mary taught me. She took me into the stratosphere last year. I was preaching at a Marian shrine down south. And I was praying my rosaries at the end of the day. And my heart was being caught up in the love of Mary for Jesus and for God. Stronger and stronger. And as I finished my rosary, I was on the fourth set of mysteries, the glorious mysteries. My heart was just catching on fire. And I said something that truly embarrassed me. Because I love the Virgin Mary so much. And I know she's the greatest of God's creatures. She's God's Mona Lisa. She's the Mona Lisa of God. Amen? And suddenly, something came to me. And it actually, I felt so embarrassed. But I was climbing higher and higher with my rosary. John Paul, with three doctorate degrees, said, This is my favorite prayer, said John Paul. A pope, by the way, who spoke in tongues. So this is my, the highest prayer, my, my, my best prayer. I was praying it and praying in tongues and lifting up to the heavens. And I was so hungry for God. Are you hungry for God? Yes. And you know, when you come to Mass and you come to Holy Communion, never receive Holy Communion if you're not hungry for God. Don't do God any favors anymore. When you come to Mass, only receive the Lord on your hand or on your tongue. Only receive the Lord if you're hungry for him more than life itself. Do not receive the Lord if you're not hungry. Don't do him any favors. Amen? Amen. Receive him only if you're hungry. The Lord says, that's why my church is dying. She wants everything else but me. She gives me one hour a week on Sundays. And she watches her television and her cell phone seven hours a day. 49 hours a week minimum by scientific studies. They give to the world 49 hours and they give me one hour. And they come to Mass and they look at their watch. They say, get it over with, Father, get it over with. Mass has to be done in 59 minutes or less so I can watch my two and a half hour movie or my three hour football game. Amen? Beloved, hunger for God with Mary's hunger. Amen? That is, that is one, spiritual writer said this, the most important word in spiritual direction, the most important word in the spiritual life is desire. 
And that's why the Lord honored King David, the apple of his eye. He said, I love David, the apple of my eye. You know why? Because he's a man of many desires. Amen. Now you say it after me. Say this, Lord, Lord. I'm the apple of your eye. I don't want to be a rotten apple. I want to desire you with Mary's hunger. I want to love you with Mary's love. So I was praying the rosary at a Marian shrine on the fourth set of mysteries, the glorious mysteries, and our heart's being caught up in the flame of love. And I'm walking and I'm praying, and I was so hungry, so hungry, beloved, so hungry. I've seen stars flash across the sky when I was praying. I was so hungry for God. Not the gifts of God, but the God of the gifts. I was hungry for God himself. I said, Lord, I, I'm, I need you. I, I want to love you more. I want to love you with Mary's love. And then I, I said a scandal. I said a heresy, so to speak. I said, no, it's not enough to love you with Mary's love. I want to love you with your love. I want to love you with your love. Because your love is infinite and divine. And Christ dwelling within is the secret of the whole Christian life. Amen. I said, oh, Mary, I'm sorry. Because I love her so much. I'm so sorry. Because I said, I, it's not enough to love you with Mary's love. I want to love you with your own love. When Our Lady and the Holy Spirit came to my rescue and they said to me, it's okay, little Father Jim, it's okay. That's why Mary's love is so great. Because only Mary loved me with my own love. Amen? Yes. Now, beloved, am I taking you to too high a place today? No, higher. We need to go higher. And you know, you know where you can find this very doctrine approved by the church? What new, modern, fully approved mystical revelation speaks of these realities? Somebody said it. She's a new saint, too. Her name is Luisa Picaretta. She's a servant of God. And she wrote 36 volumes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit called Living in the Divine Will. The Book of Heaven, it's called. The Book of Heaven. And so, brothers and sisters, the Lord says to call you up higher. Don't be content to be average Catholics or even average Charismatics. Oh, I pray in tongues twice a week. And I go to the encounter meeting and... I'm perfect, you see? No, don't, don't be, don't settle for that. I want you to become saints, amen? And a saint is someone who begins to love God with God's own love, amen? Hallelujah. Don't tell the bishop. And so brothers and sisters, it's a word I want to give to you tonight from Our Lady. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. When we say Mary, she says Jesus. She's the only one to love God with God's love. It is powerful. You need to taste it. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen? Now, beloved, I want to pray with you another decade. Is that all right? We can begin to love God with God's own love. Is that okay? We did the fifth joyful mystery. I'd like to do the fifth luminous mystery with you, which is the institution of the Holy Eucharist. Amen? What good is our prayer if our prayer doesn't make us fall in love with God? Amen? What good is it? No good at all. We offer this mystery now, the fifth mystery of light, the Lord, out of love for us, institutes the Eucharist. Beloved, you know I've had a couple of Masses where the blood appeared on the host. You know the Eucharist is real, don't you? Yes. Do we have real Catholics here tonight? Yes. You know he's there, don't you? Yes. I was leading a, a retreat for a youth group in Georgia last year at my own headquarters with Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity. They had a beautiful youth group. Brought them in, 
We did all the girls on Saturday and all the young men on Sunday, a day of retreat. On Sunday, we had beautiful musicians, then we had really good speakers. I was giving powerful homily and teaching. We had charismatic gifts occurring, healing. Halfway through the retreat, I had to stop and, and leave to do a funeral mass on a Sunday afternoon. That's the life of a priest. And so I had to leave them in, in good hands. Mother Teresa's Missionaries of Charity were there, and I went to go to the funeral mass. And after the funeral mass, I drove right back to help finish the retreat. And on my way back, I'm in the car, and I'm crying. I'm crying. And beloved, I was telling the Lord, Lord, thank you for being with us. It's a really, it's a really good retreat. I mean, even if you say so myself, it's not because of me. It was an A+. Plus. Beautiful in every way. Beautiful, powerful, and good. But I saw the teenage boys. Our children today are jaded. You could have Thomas Aquinas and Francis of Assisi in front of them, and they look at you with glossy and glassy eyes. All they want is their cell phone. They've been corrupted by the evil one. There's a reason why Lucifer is called the Lord of the air. And the Wi-Fi is the air through whom the Lord of the air, Satan, flies. Amen? There's a reason for this. I said, Lord, you're giving us a good retreat. And we have good talks and good music. I said, it's not enough. It's not enough, Lord. We need something more! Not enough to have good words and pretty words. We need something more. Something in their heart alive. An encounter with God. We need something else, Lord. And I know you're beautiful. And you're with us. And you're doing good, Lord. But we need something more. I'm sorry. And I was weeping. Come down and help us. So I got there, and I did the next talk in the afternoon, and I'm at the ambo, and halfway through the talk as I'm preaching to the boys about the Eucharist and the real presence, the Holy Spirit then gives me a direction, and he says to me, stop there and put my son on the altar. And so I said, guys, I'm going to place the Lord on the altar. And I went to the tabernacle. And I took the Lord out. And I placed him in the monstrance and placed him there on the altar. And the young musicians, they knew the O Salutaris by heart. Right away, they picked up on it and they played the song of worship. O Salutaris, Hostia. I went around the front to lead the prayers for the boys. I knelt down at my chapel in Georgia last year. And as I look up to lead my boys, the face of Jesus is in the hose looking back at me, his eyes open, twinkling and alive. In the hose. I've seen it quite a few times. But this was vivid, and his eyes were twinkling. And so I asked him, I'm not the boss. Jesus is the boss. Amen? I'm not the high priest. The Lord is the high priest. I'm the little priest. I said, Jesus, can I tell the boys what you're doing right now? Because we see lots of miracles when you follow Jesus. Lots of them. Can I tell them? He said, yes, tell them. I said, boys, I said, right now in the sacred host, Jesus' face has appeared on the host, and he's looking at you right now. And the first boys in the first row screamed, because they were close to me. They could see. They went, ah! So the second row popped up, and they went, ah! And the third row popped up, ah! And I turned around and said, if you want to see from the back, come on up here with me. The whole church stampeded like buffalo to the front and gathered around me, all these teenage boys, and they're crying. 
Jesus is looking at us. He was a Jewish Messiah, by the way. He looked just like a Jewish Messiah with long hair. He was beautiful. Can you say that? Say this. Say, Jesus. Jesus. You're beautiful. beautiful. Now, say it the teenage way. Are you ready? Jesus. Jesus. You're beautiful. (laughs) Oh, come on now. You can do better than that. Say it a little louder. Okay, with a little more unction. Say, Jesus. Jesus. You're beautiful. Beautiful. Ooh, baby. Say, Jesus. Jesus. We love you. Amen. And say, Jesus, Jesus. appear to me as well. well. The Bible says, draw close to me, O man, and I will draw close to you. Amen. Amen. Those boys came up and I taught them the blood of Jesus' prayer that I'm going to teach you right now. I taught them the blood of Jesus' prayer, and the boys would not stop. The prayer from Africa, from Nigeria, the most precious blood of Jesus' devotion with an imprimatur approved by Holy Mother Church that has the power of deliverance in it and inner healing. I had the boys pray it with me 500 times in a row. We all took turns praying it, and it goes like this. It's only 12 words. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ, save us and the whole world. Amen. Well, we took turns leading it. So I would say the first half and the boys would answer. Then I'd have the boys take turn leading it. Let's try it now. We do 10 in a row because there's somebody here tonight who's suicidal in the church right now. In fact, it's more than one person right now. Yes. In the encounter, beautiful ministry, There are two people here who are seriously suicidal. And there's a whole dozen who are depressed right now in the church next to us. We're going to pray right now for the release of any demonic spirit of suicide or depression in anybody here. Amen? Amen. This prayer works. It's effective. It's efficient. It's approved. It's safe. Are you ready? I'm going to say the first half. I will say most precious blood of Jesus Christ. And you would please answer, save us and the whole world. Pray for yourself and anybody else here to be released from anything diabolical, especially of that nature of depression and suicide. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. Amen. Now we're going to pray 10 more for your family members, especially those who aren't here tonight. Many of us have many relatives who are depressed. Did you know that? I'm not saying that theoretically. I can actually see your families around you in the spirit. Do you realize you have the majority of your relatives are in trouble right now? The majority of them? We're going to pray now for the darkness of Satan. It's coming all over the place, you know what I mean, from every possible source, especially the utterly, completely uh, corrupt news media, totally corrupt. They're giving us lies day in and day out. And Satan is the father of lies. Amen? Amen? Your family, beloved, your family members are in trouble. This next 10 is for them, that God releases them from the lies and from the depression. Amen? This prayer works. Let's say now for the family members, would you lead this one, beloved? I'm going to answer you. You will say the first six words, and I'm going to answer you. You will say, most precious blood of Jesus Christ, ten times in a row for our families. All together, most. Save us and the whole world. 
Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Save us in the whole world. Amen. Now, can we pray a little bit more? Here's what the Spirit is telling me. There's a spirit of witchcraft in the church tonight. I think there's somebody here who's been practicing or playing with a Ouija board or witchcraft. Sometimes the witches will send someone to a Catholic event to utter curses in the back the whole time to try to keep it from being effective. Did you realize that? Father Benedict Groeschel taught us about that. If there's anybody in the church who's playing with witchcraft in any way, shape, including astrology columns, by the way, including astrology, let's ask God to release our friends from anything of a witchcraft nature. Amen? Amen. Would you answer me please now? Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. 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 I want to pray a little bit more with you, then I'm going to share with you a true story. This spirit I've seen in several other places is common now throughout the world. It's an anti-Catholic spirit. It's also an anti-Eucharistic spirit. And we know the latest surveys show that 80% of Roman Catholics do not believe in the real presence of the Lord. That is inspired by Satan. He knows God is in the Eucharist. Amen? Amen. That's why when they have a black mass, they do not go to a Protestant church to get a piece of blessed bread. They never do that. They always come to a Catholic Mass to get a consecrated host because Satan and the Satan worshipers know that they know that they know that the host at the Mass is God. Amen? Amen. There's an anti-Eucharistic spirit around the world and it's clear from sacred scripture and from prophecy the devil wants to shut down the Mass. Did it not happen last year? He wants to shut down all the Masses of the world. He wants to shut it down. It's going to happen again. It's an anti-Catholic, anti-Eucharistic spirit. We are in an apocalyptic battle. Amen? Amen. Let's pray now, ten in a row, against any anti-Catholic spirit, any anti-Eucharistic spirit, any anti-Marian spirit in your family. Are you ready? We want real faith, you see. We want the faith of the apostles. Not a doubtful faith, a real faith. Amen? Amen. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Save us from the whole world. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Most precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.